Starting with our trimmed faced off block, we're ready to start thick sectioning using the Leica UC7. Currently in my specimen holder, I have a flattened bedding chuck loaded, and I'm going to be using the beam capsule. So I'm going to have to change the flattened bedding chuck to the beam capsule chuck. It's currently in the thick uh, trimming holder, so I'm just going to loosen that up and rotate it around so I can see the Allen wrench key. So I can loosen that up, remove the flattened bedding chuck, and insert the beam capsule holder. <clears throat> and when we tighten these, you want to make sure things are nice and tight. I'm going to put my sample in, and using the same Allen wrench key, I'm going to tighten that up. And again, you want to make sure that your sample is nice and tight so it doesn't wiggle around. So our sample is all ready to go. And now we're going to load our knife. When we do this, when you handle diamond knives, be sure to never touch the knife itself, the, the blade. So always be careful and hold it from the sides and the back. As I load that, I want to make sure that goes all the way forward so that it's flush against the front. Again, nice and tight. Using our adjustment, we're going to set the clearance angle to 6 degrees, and that's an offset so that the block face does not intersect with the back of the knife afterwards. I usually set the knife arc at 0 degrees as well, and that's just a starting position. It's a good idea to always retract your manual advance so that you always have something to go by. Uh, you can see that this was already pretty much all the way forward when the specimen stage is fully retracted from and the manual advance that entire triangle will be covered. Loading the sample chuck is important uh, from a couple points of view. You want to make sure that the numbers are in the upper right hand corner. That way then your specimen rotation and specimen arc will always be on the same side so you don't always have to look and see which uh, control you're moving. So you always want to be uh, standard with these types of things. As we put the knife holder in, we're going to slide that forward and I always use fingers in the front so that you don't auto, uh, accidentally move it too quickly. And looking through the binoculars, you want to make sure that your sample is relatively close, but you don't want to be a hero. You don't want to move it too close. And it's important to have the specimen at a good height so you can actually see where the sample is. Often you want to use a different area of the knife in terms of its length. So you can go left or right or east or west depending on your instrument. Uh, you might have a knife mark in one area. The next thing we want to do is set our sectioning window and first we do above where we would want our sectioning speed to start and then we move the block down to where we would want it finished and that's the region that it goes through the cutting speed next we want to make sure that we have a good view of what we're looking at we want to put the field of view our objects our block face and our knife right in the middle of our field of view and in focus and let's get that a little bit closer to the middle of the field of view and that's important for our next step which is the alignment of our block face we can see a little bit of a reflection and our knife edge so the first thing that I'm going to do is rotate my block so that the knife uh, is parallel to the specimen's leading edge and we can see that looks pretty good as we make other adjustments, we might have to change that a little bit later on. The reflection that we can just see is that diagonal line going from left to right across my block face is not straight across. It's closer on the left than it is on the right. So I'm going to change my knife arc to do that. Now, be careful. You can see that as you change your knife arc, it may start to hit into the sample. So you have to back up using the re manual retraction and get that so that our reflection or the which is the proximity of the knife to our block face is pretty even across there. 
Now as I go up and down, I'm going to be paying attention to that reflection because again, it's going to show me that right now the top of the block is closer than the bottom of the block. And that's, you can see that due to the thickness of the reflection. So I'm going to change my specimen arc and rotate it so that the specimen's top is farther away than it was before. And as I change that, you can see the reflection is going to change. And again, we can see that uh, reflection, again, the representation of the proximity of our knife edge to the block face. And as I move that down, notice how it's thick there. And as I move it down, it gets thinner. And th this is important. What we want to do is have that even all the way across and then also even in terms of the same thickness from top to bottom. So I'm going to readjust my specimen arc. And you're going to be doing this a number of different times. There's uh, several iterations that, that's good to go through. Uh, you don't have to back way up, but you don't want to have it too close so that your block face does not hit into your knife edge. Now that reflection looks pretty even all the way across, and it's staying relatively the same thickness, but I'm still a little bit far away, so I will need to move closer. As you move closer, little changes are more evident, so magnification is important. So now I can see that it is a little bit closer on the left-hand side, and get it into focus that it is still a little bit closer on the left hand side than it is on the right and my block is slightly rotated. So again I'm going to rotate my block face so that the leading edge of the block is parallel to the knife edge. And now notice that the reflection comes on all at the same time. And again my knife arc is a little closer on the left than it is on the right. So I'm going to back up and move that. And notice now that it looks pretty good from left to right. So I want the knife arc good from left to right and the specimen arc good from top to bottom. So the alignment is looking pretty good from top to bottom although it's still just a little bit closer at the top than it is at the bottom. So be sure that when you make these adjustments it's not bad to back up from your block and then re-advance because sometimes if you make too much of an adjustment then when you bring the block down it can chop off the top of your block and sometimes that would break the block out rather than just cutting it and then it could also hurt your knife. So doing small adjustments of your knife arc and then moving it forward a little bit more and then checking your specimen arc make another little adjustment you want to make sure that that's all very nice and tight so that your block face will section evenly from top to bottom and left to right. And now my line is very small and as I move that down it stays the, relatively the same length all the time, same thickness. And now I'm going to bring it down, advancing it, and I only needed to do a slight advance. I did two steps of 500 nanometers. So now I want to set up my thick sectioning parameters and I'm going to press on that and it says it's three and a half millimeters per second at 500 nanometers thickness. I like two. Uh, that's up for your preferences. I've already adjusted my cutting window and so now I'm going to push start uh, pretty soon. Uh, first thing I want to do is fill my boat up with water. When I do that, I want low magnification now. My, my high mag work is already done. Generally, when I put water in my boat, I always overfill it to a degree. Uh, and then I will retract out some water a little bit later on. This knife has been used quite a bit, and so the area around the knife is a little bit hydrophobic, generally with newer knives. Um, then it is more hydrophilic. So this one is a little bit hydrophobic and we're going to have to deal with that. You can see how the 
water doesn't quite go up there. So I'm going to take my eyelash manipulator and carefully put that in there. And as I do this, I want to make sure that I, my that metal part doesn't enter hit into the glass knife. And of course, I'm doing all of this under the dissecting microscope, the binoculars that are on the ultramicrotome itself. And it's a good idea to get the water good on the sides too. Otherwise, when the sections come off, they can float over to the side. The next thing to do notice is that the water is currently transparent. I can see right from the top to the bottom and that means there's too much water in there so I'm going to retract some water and that will provide me with a nice silver sheen and that's an indication that you have the water at the correct level. A little bit more. Now notice I can't see the knife and the resin that holds it in there. Again, uh, some of the water has drawn back from the knife edge. So I'm going to use my eyelash manipulator again very carefully so that you don't hit the edge of the knife and I just draw that across the front of it. I don't actually touch the edge of the knife just the very face of it. And just make sure you get everything in there. And so now my alignment is all done and I'm ready to start sectioning. So I push cut and it will now advance 500 nanometers at a time and there's my first full section. That reflection inhibits the colors uh, from being able to be seen a little bit until it gets out into the far part of, of the water. But I'm getting good sections from top to bottom and the sections should be transparent and look metallic, nice and shiny. If they are cloudy and milky, then your knife is not sharp enough. Now it's time to pick our sections up. I use an eyelash manipulator. Some people use a, a, a perfect loop, whatever your preference is. And I just pick up a section and it drapes over my eyelash manipulator, sort of like a rug on a clothesline. And I have drops of water on our slide. And this one I get two on that one. That's a good shot. Put those in another drop. I always usually do two drops so that we I have a number of different areas to look at. We want to evaporate the water from underneath our sections, but we want to make sure that the temperature does not boil the water, otherwise we're going to have bubbles in our sections. We wait till they're dry and stain them. Uh, this stain, uh, epoxy tissue stain, usually only takes about a minute and generally I only stain one but this time I'm going to go ahead and stain both of them. And that only stains for about one minute. Uh, you never want to let the stain dry on the section otherwise it forms a precipitate that doesn't just wash off very easily. And always put the top back on so it doesn't uh, dry out. After about a minute, a minute and a half, you just don't want, again, the, the stain to dry on top of the sections. We want to rinse those off, and sorry my hand is in the way here, but we want to rinse off and make sure that all of the stain is off. If any of the stain is residual on there, uh, then it will uh, inhibit viewing the sections that may stain over top of the sections, and we can see the sections right there. Finally, we're going to take a look at the sections and determine where our region of interest is, where that is in the block, uh, take a look at the size of the block and the, the relationship of our region of interest to the block face, and determine if we have to th trim down again for thick sectioning. If not, then we're all set, and thank you very much.